Have you fallen? Come. The floor is hardly the place for the greatest of Elden Smiths. I, I, um... Feanor's uh, hammer is is missing a uh, missing a. Uh, uh. You know how forgetful you can be. When Amazon Studios first announced the Rings of Power, many fans of J.R.R. Tolkien's legendary works were cautiously optimistic, but not me. With a budget of nearly one billion dollars. The prequel series promised to bring Middle-earth back to life, exploring the second age in all its grandeur. However, the first season was met with, shall we say, widespread disappointment. Many longtime Tolkien fans felt that it strayed too far from the spirit and tone of the original works. Season 2, which released in 2024, was anticipated to address some of these criticisms but unfortunately deepened many of the show's most glaring issues. So exactly why has Rings of Power Season 2 continued to frustrate fans? Why does it keep focusing on its deviations from Tolkien's established lore? And why has the lackluster storytelling caused this series to feel so out of place in Tolkien's canon? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, Take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. The most damning criticism of the Rings of Power has been its blatant departure from the world that Tolkien meticulously crafted. While the showrunners have claimed that the series is inspired by the Silmarillion, and appendices from the trilogy, fans and critics alike have pointed out that the liberties taken in the story so far are so excessive that they no longer feel like authentic Tolkien adaptations. In season two, this issue becomes even more pronounced. One of the biggest problems is the show's timeline. The Second Age, which spans thousands of years in Tolkien's works, is compressed into a handful of events that take place over a few decades. In the original lore, the forging of the rings, the rise of Numenor, and Sauron's eventual return as the Dark Lord are gradual, carefully developed events. The show, however, rushes through these pivotal moments, sacrificing the depth and nuance that made Tolkien's world so rich. For instance, Galadriel's arc continues to baffle fans. In Tolkien's writings, she is one of the most wise, powerful, and ancient beings in Middle-earth. However, in the Rings of Power, she is portrayed as a brash, impulsive warrior, more akin to a modern-day action hero than the regal figure seen in Lord of the Rings. While character development is crucial in any story, many fans have argued that the show fundamentally misunderstands who Galadriel is supposed to be. Her characterization feels more like a complete rewrite than a natural extension of Tolkien's vision. In addition, the portrayal of Sauron in Season 2 has left many fans bewildered. In Tolkien's works, Sauron is a cunning deceiver, a master manipulator who lures people to his side with promises of power and order. Yet in the Rings of Power, his character lacks this depth, often feeling more like a typical one-dimensional villain that we've seen so far. The complexity of his rise to power, how he tricked the elves into helping him forge the rings, is rushed and lacks the gravity of the original tale. The moral grayness that made Sauron such a fascinating antagonist in Tolkien's lore is entirely missing. Another major critique of the Rings of Power, which the critical drinker has already talked about, is its confusing and often incoherent narrative structure. Season 2 struggles with the same problem that plagued the first season. Too many disconnected plot lines that fail to converge in a meaningful way. The result is a disjointed story that feels like a series of unrelated events rather than a cohesive narrative. One of the main plot lines centers around the Kingdom of Numenor, which plays a critical role in Tolkien's Second Age. In the books, Numenor is depicted as a grand, 
powerful civilization that gradually falls into corruption due to pride and the influence of Sauron. In the Rings of Power, however, Numenor is introduced with minimal context and the internal politics that led to its downfall are rushed and underdeveloped. Key characters such as Elendil and Farazan are sidelined, leaving viewers with little sense of why Numenor's fate is so important. Another example of narrative incoherence is the subplot involving the Southlands, which is transformed into Mordor over the course of the series. This transformation, which should have been a gradual, ominous event, is instead rushed and feels forced. The Southlanders, who are supposed to represent the human race's potential for both good and evil, are given little development, and their motivations remain unclear throughout the season. This lack of focus and clarity in the storytelling makes it difficult for viewers to become invested in the events unfolding on screen. Fans of Tolkien's works have long appreciated the depth and complexity of Middle-earth, where every event has a purpose and every character serves a larger narrative arc. The Rings of Power seems to ignore this fundamental aspect of Tolkien's storytelling, opting for spectacle over substance. The tonal inconsistency in The Rings of Power is another significant issue that has alienated fans. Tolkien's works, while filled with moments of darkness and despair, are ultimately hopeful and grounded in themes of friendship, sacrifice, and the triumph of good over evil. The tone of The Lord of the Rings is one of epic grandeur, with a deep sense of history and myth. In contrast, The Rings of Power seems unsure of what tone it wants to adopt in the first place. At times it tries to capture the seriousness of Tolkien's world, but these moments are often undercut by awkward humor, modern dialogue, and action sequences that feel more akin to a Marvel movie than a Middle-earth epic. For example, scenes involving Galadriel in battle are choreographed like a typical blockbuster action set pieces with fast cuts and exaggerated stunts that feel out of place in Tolkien's world, which is known for its deliberate pacing and gravitas. The result is a show that often feels like it's caught between two worlds. On the one hand, it wants to be an epic fantasy in the vein of The Lord of the Rings, but on the other hand, it feels like it's trying too hard to appeal to modern audiences who expect fast-paced action and quippy dialogue. This tonal dissonance detracts from the show's ability to immerse viewers in Middle-earth and convey the weight of the events unfolding. Character development is a cornerstone of great storytelling, and in Tolkien's works, even the most minor characters are given depth and motivation. Unfortunately, Rings of Power continues to struggle in this area. Many of the key characters in Season 2 feel flat and underdeveloped, making it difficult for viewers to become emotionally invested in their journeys. Galadriel, as I mentioned earlier, is a prime example. Instead of the wise and powerful figure from Tolkien's lore, she is portrayed as a reckless, vengeful warrior with little explanation for her sudden transformation into the regal elf we know from Lord of the Rings. Her motivations are often unclear, and her character arc feels more like a series of random events than a coherent journey in this show. Another character who suffers from poor development is Halbrand, who is revealed to be Sauron by the end of Season 1. In Season 2, his character continues to lack the depth and complexity that made Sauron such a compelling antagonist in the books. Rather than being a master manipulator who corrupts those around him through cunning and deceit, Halbrand's character arc feels rushed and simplistic. Even the elves who play a central role in Tolkien's Second Age are reduced to mere plot devices in the Rings of Power. Characters like Elrond and Celebrimbor, who are instrumental in the creation of the Rings of Power in the books, are sidelined, with little screen time dedicated to their internal struggles and motivations. While the Rings of Power is undoubtedly a visual spectacle, with stunning CGI and impressive set design, this emphasis on aesthetics comes at the expense of meaningful storytelling. The show's massive budget is evident in its production value, but many fans feel that the series relies too heavily on visuals to distract 
from its narrative shortcomings. In Tolkien's works, the beauty of Middle-earth is always secondary to the stories of its people and their struggles. The grandeur of the world serves to enhance the narrative, not overshadow it. In The Rings of Power, however, it often feels like the visuals are the main attraction, with the story taking a back seat. For example, the sequences involving the dwarf city of Khazad-dûm are visually breathtaking, but the political intrigue and tension between the dwarves and elves are underexplored. Similarly, the scenes set in Numenor are visually impressive, but the lack of character development and narrative depth makes it difficult to care about the fate of this great kingdom. In the end, The Rings of Power Season 2 continues to fall short of expectations, leaving many fans of Tolkien's works feeling frustrated and disappointed. The show's departure from Tolkien's carefully crafted world, its coherent narrative structure, tonal inconsistencies, underdeveloped characters, and reliance on visual spectacle over substance all contribute to its failure to capture the magic of Middle-earth. While the Rings of Power may appeal to casual normie viewers who are less familiar with Tolkien's lore, it is unlikely to win over longtime fans who have come to expect a certain level of depth and respect for the source material. Ultimately, The Rings of Power serves as a cautionary tale of what happens when a beloved franchise is reinterpreted through a modern lens, sacrificing the heart and soul of the original in the process. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like The Rings of Power? If you did, can you tell me exactly why? And should there even be another season? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one! Okie dokie! Yeah.